approaching the podium once again. Another year, another budget. But this is one of restraint, meaning few perks for British Columbians. We are being extremely prudent and very cautious in our growth projections for the economy of British Columbia. It's what's necessary in order to balance the budget, with the deficit currently sitting at $2.5 billion, what the government has committed to eliminate by this time next year. The plan to post a surplus budget of $154 million in 2013-14 and $250 million the following year, but accomplishing this could signal difficult times ahead. This budget is tough. I don't think you've seen a budget like this in British Columbia since 1983, which was the era of restraint in British Columbia. And I think you'll find that compared to other governments across the country, this is as tough as it gets. Over the next three years, health care and education are the only sectors to get a modest increase in spending. But almost all other ministries will have their budgets virtually frozen. For example, between now and 2015, investment in the Ministry of Children and Family Development remains stagnant even if there's an increase in demand for services. So today we're releasing the report on the uh, Coastal Ferry Act. And despite recent findings by the Ferry Commissioner calling for more government subsidy, the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure has no room for it. Uh, $170 million a year, I believe, is a, a, a pretty generous contribution to the ferry system. Over the next 10 years, that's $1.7 billion. But given inflation, the numbers are effectively cuts. I think we'll hear over the coming days and weeks, a lot of different groups and community groups, families, worried that that means a real decline in the quality of services. On top of that, full-time equivalent jobs are projected to drop at a rate of 2.7% over the next three years, with the majority of those workers based here in Victoria. It's expected to be achieved through attrition, but will result in one of the smallest civil services in decades. It's the least I can ever remember, the least I've ever experienced, and it already is the leanest public sector in the country. In another first, the government is planning to sell off assets. As many as 100 properties expected to generate $700 million. There's also money to be made by privatizing the Liquor Distribution Board. Then there are things that stay the same. MSP premiums are going up again, this time by 4%. Compounded, that's up 24% in the past four years. Not in line with the government who's insisted on holding the line when it comes to increasing taxes. People across this province have really been struggling, and this budget shows a government with no vision, stumbling along and continuing to get its priorities completely wrong. But there are some small goodies hidden in these pages. First-time homebuyers who buy a new home can get a $10,000 tax credit. Up to $25 will be provided per child as a fitness and art credit. And the Seniors Home Renovation Tax Credit, maxing out at $1,000, is aimed at keeping the elderly in their homes longer. But no one is celebrating just yet, instead preparing for a painful few years as the government works to get back on track.